himself, which he claims that the Federal Reserve uh, has only dodged, and rightly so, um, in order for us to understand that he could possibly represent a solution. So Ron Paul has to come out of hiding and justify these propositions to us. Um, as I've said many times, people have tried to put me together with Ron Paul since the earliest 1980s. And to this day, he has never once responded to a proposition of mathematically perfected economy. Now, if he's a credible authority, monetary authority, how can that possibly be? Is it possible that there is an alternate solution to inflation and deflation? which of course are defined respectively as increases or decreases in circulation per goods and services? Is there an alternate solution other than to maintain a circulation which is always equal, in fact, to the remaining value of represented property then? Well, mathematically, it's impossible that there is another solution. And yet Ron Paul advocates the gold standard decrying inflation which can't even exist in a system which merely collateralizes debt, but much worse, which does not exist when in fact the circulation is far less than the remaining value of represented property. If we did not exist instead in a deflated circulation, we would have on hand amidst all of us distributed however it might be, but on average each of us would possess so much circulation as property exists amongst us. So in fact we live in a terribly deflated circulation, but Ron Paul somehow proposes to deflate that circulation further to on average if we have 80 billion dollars of monetary reserves on hand to approximately $266 per capita. Obviously, we couldn't pay for our house with it, that $266. We couldn't save for the future. We couldn't fulfill our contracts. Industry can't survive selling its production to a market so deprived of circulation to sustain its consumption of that production. And particularly, it couldn't survive decreasing its prices at a loss, at a, as a, at a tremendous loss overall, um, to a circulation which is so minuscule it couldn't hardly sustain even the depression that we are in today. Um, to reduce all of our holdings of circulation to $266 a piece on average would probably collapse the economy immediately. So this isn't just a prospectively dangerous thought. The arithmetic is simple. And any responsible person who truly holds out hope of ending the Federal Reserve System, which of course is a common goal. Um, it isn't just that I agree with Ron Paul that we should end the Fed. I've been speaking about this since I was 16 years old in 1968. You know, Ron Paul didn't precede me in, 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 in advocating that we have to ter terminate the Federal Reserve System. He's instead said that Austrian economists predicted the First Great Depression and the Second Great Depression. Well, how could this possibly be true even? When Austrian economists are blatant advocates of interest, which is the fundamental cause of both events, which is the fundamental cause of ever-increasing artificial indebtedness under the obfuscation of the currency, which I've outlined. Well, of course, you can't legitimately project, for instance, that the sky is falling, saying that gravity doesn't exist to hold the sky against the earth. The credibility of this uh, proposition that the Austrian economists, so to speak, have predicted the First and Second Great Depression hinges on whatever processes they might have done so. 
Anyone who just claims that they have done so without saying how, and in fact proving how, that the means or how is a legitimate process for projecting failure, is frankly snowing us. So it's of great importance to all responsible citizens that we that we hold these people who are, are are wanting to end the central banking system, but not knowing how, and not proposing even uh, uh, propositions which truly end all of the things from which we suffer. Even we have to get to the bottom of this, and that means. That as a people, we have to have a credible dialogue. That means that every country in the world, right and left, have to come together and forget which side they've, you know, pretended served them for so long because neither side did. And what they have to, what they, what we have to realize altogether is, if there is a plan, it has meat to it, and that's the thing we should be discussing. It isn't enough to run for uh, such a high office as, as President of the United States merely claiming that you predicted something when you are an advocate of the very process which causes the destruction. And when your proposition, for instance, of competing banks is, is inclined to preserve interest which purported Austrian economists have advocated since day one. This is not even credible. When we look around us, we see, you know, recent headlines underscore how important it is for us to come to grips with these issues immediately. New York Times, for instance, uh, on the first of the month, just a couple of days ago, uh, pressing Obama, house bars rise for debt ceiling. Think about that for a moment. House bars rise for debt ceiling. What does this imply as a consequence of intelligent exploration of any possible useful meaning? What does this imply? Does it is imply, does the consequence that we need to impose, we may even think that we need to impose a debt ceiling, does that imply that we have a rise in debt as a consequence of a lack of gold, which exists as much as it ever did everywhere around us? Does this mean that a handful of states which have purportedly reauthorized gold or silver coin are somehow going to arrest further multiplication of federal indebtedness uh, and private indebtedness, which multiplies in parable, parallel as a consequence of interest? Well, of course not. Gold has no power, particularly coexisting with an obfuscation of our promissory obligations to each other subject to interest. It can't coexist in arrest multiplication of artificial indebtedness. And this is why from the beginning I have resisted all of these uh, alternate propositions of, of, of purported alternate currencies such as electronic currencies, uh, database systems which have arisen in, in truly in the wake of my work <clears throat> but I've always explained to the authors of these propositions how they don't solve anything. True, some of us may barter and in, 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 in our barter we trade whatever we might produce to someone else for the approximate equivalent of what they produce, but the costs of our production even are affected by this multiplication of artificial indebtedness. Even if you're trading oatmeal cookies ostensibly for software development services, the costs of the dough and all the things that are put into the cookies, as well as all the costs of software development, are rising. Well, you might say, well, being as those things balance out, we're 
we're paying oatmeal cookies for for software therefore there's no cost we've insulated ourselves from the consequences no that's not true at all it is true in in res it may be true in, in respect to uh uh, just that transaction but the fact is that this is only one transaction whereas we are subject to all of the other transactions going on around us which increase the cost of all things and make us require us to pay for these things uh, particularly as the obfuscation of the currency multiplies the sum of indebtedness upon all of us so in truth at all times, just the same, the costs of sustaining our industry and commerce are increasing in terms of how much of the circulation is dedicated to servicing this ever-escalating sum of artificial indebtedness, which, of course, results in this maldisposition that I've described in which ever less of the circulation can be used or dedicated to sustaining the industry and commerce which are obligated to service this debt. We don't escape that by creating a separate purportedly isolated currency or economy within or subject to the effects of this system of terminal system of exploitation which we are are subject to. We have to isolate them completely Moreover, if we did so, we have to make a way of interfacing the equivalent of mathematically perfected economy with the terminal system of exploitation so that the mathematically perfected economy never pays the consequences of the terminal system of exploitation if it is indeed to survive without consequence. And none of these systems propose this, although I've even outlined how to do it as early as 1979 uh, in my propositions to the Reagan campaign. But it's likewise a fact then that if we purportedly returned to the gold standard, which isn't the case unless we're going to con return to the constitutional value of gold as well, which is the last thing that any of these gold bugs who are supporting Ron Paul actually want. So the honest money and the stability that they claim they're going to achieve, in fact, are not true at all. Uh, uh, inherently, if, if if all of the value of all things is going to decline so that uh, $266 of gold per, per capita uh, in the United States, for instance, would sustain all of our, would ostensibly or purportedly sustain all our commerce and industry, well, that itself is instability. Then when you ask these people, okay, well then how would gold further account for further industry? Suppose we multiplied our output uh, by two and, 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 and gold really somehow, although they can't tell us how, uh, relieved us of our you know, debts and obligations and all this so that somehow we would prosper twice as much. So we, we, we increase industrial production twofold per capita. Does this mean again that the prices are going to drop by half? Well, uh, hardly because uh, again, uh, you have at any given time, you have uh, costs of whatever you're engaged in and those costs predicate what the downstream price of your production has to be. You can't reduce it. So the thing is, this is all a bunch of mere dreaming unless we get concrete answers which are 100% absolutely accountable and irrefutable. And this just isn't the case. We don't have the slightest idea how Ron Paul is even proposing that we might convert this system of terminal exploitation into uh, a, a former gold standard when that isn't even the problem that 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 uh, uh, we've violated the uh, uh, former gold standard isn't even the problem. 
the, the, the reason that we violated the gold standard is the very fact that the limited circulation related to gold uh, precludes sustaining increasing industry above it. You're, you're engaged in paying for your house. You assume a debt. I mean, it's, it, it, to, to revert to the gold standard, is it suffers some of the, the problems that spending money into circulation is. You deny people credit. 